Hamid University has signed MOUs with different industries and universities, including foreign universities. Bhagwan Mahavir Education Foundation organized international as well as national conferences, workshops, technical festivals for enhancing technical level of the students. Non-technical competitions like photography, quiz competitions, street play, etc. are also organized frequently. National Service Scheme has been doing great work to spread social awareness among citizens of the Surat region in the form of blood donation camp, Swaj Bharat, free plantation, free health checkup camp, Nasha Mukti Abhyan, and all of these activities are conducted every year in one week for nation program. Mega Job Fair is also organized every year in which 150 companies visits in our campus. Dear participants, our today's speaker is Dr. Hemant C. Trivedi, PhD in Marketing, FBP from IIM Ahmedabad, Fellow ICA, MBA in Marketing and BBA. Dr. Trivedi is Senior Professor and Dean at School of Management, the North Cap University Gurugram. He was Professor and Chair Faculty of Communication at Flame University, Pune, and his previous tenure was as Director, School of Petroleum Management, PDPU, Gandhinagar. Earlier, he was professor in marketing area at the Mudra Institute of Communications, Ahmedabad, where he introduced and led the PG diploma program in retail communication management from 2005 onwards and an executive postgraduate diploma program in communications management in March 2008. Dr. Trivedi was dean, College of Management and Economic Studies at the University of Petroleum and Energy Studies, Dehradun, from August 2010 to March 2011. Before joining MICA, in November 2004, he was with MBA program at Bhavnagar University since 1994. He has conducted several short-term FDP and MDP programs and three national and four state-level conferences and seminars. His doctoral work focused on retail promotions by regional, national, and multinational brands. He has to his credit more than 30 publications with academic general of repute, national and international conference proceedings, national industrial reports, etc. He is reasonably well-traveled through UK, Europe, Middle East, and the Far Eastern region. His retail yatra concept took him around all the corners of India with his students of retail. His academic ex experience is more than 15 years heading various programs, committees, academic councils, and board of studies at different universities and business schools. Professor Trivedi maintains active interest in academic innovation and experimentation. He consults in technological innovations, branding, strategic marketing, and retail. And now, my dear participants, before the commencement of this webinar, I request all the participants to write the questions in question answer column, which will be created at the end of this webinar. Now, I request Dr. Trivedi to start with this webinar. Good afternoon, everybody. And thank you, Ms. Nikita. It was a very nice introduction. Sometimes when I listen to this, I start thinking whether I've done it all. Uh, but especially listening to it over two, three minutes, it looks to be too much. Uh, but yes, over a long period of around 20, 25 years, uh, one can have got to doing quite a bit of things. And thank you so much for your introduction. It was uh, very interesting to me. I don't know about the audience, but to me, at least, it was definitely very interesting. Uh, well, the day I started uh, listening to Snehal Bhai and uh, trying to understand as to what could be the topic and how could we go about it, and uh, well, uh, he told me that it has to do something with uh, branding and we should look at brands and then uh, uh, we should be talking about small brands rather than large brands or big brands. So I said, okay. So accordingly, I have tried to put together some ideas that I have. Uh, many of them I have actually borrowed from others because that is how I do. I read whatever I am able to come across in a given context. Uh, and what all I have studied over a period of time, I try to incorporate all of those uh, into uh, whatever webinar or whatever talk I do. So. Uh, some of you might have actually read or heard whatever I'm going to say. Uh, and for some of you people, it may be a new thing, right? So let 
me start off with the sharing of the screen where I have a small PPT to talk about and I'll keep on trying to elaborate on the points that I have actually uh, created in the PPT, right? So, let us see. No, not that. Yeah. So, this is where I begin. Branding the small brands post COVID 19, especially. The next big small brand. Now, I don't know whether you would like to have the big small and the small big or the big as it is big and the small as it can be small. The idea here is that no brand actually is small. Every brand started small and it took years together for a small brand to become big. And in order to exemplify, I have taken two brands which are quite well known to Indians. Uh, one of them being Dalda, uh, which is a very, very famous and popular brand uh, right from my grandfather's days. Uh, it has been a very popular brand. And uh, parallel to that, there is another brand which is very popular in North India uh, called Gagan. Uh, they have a, a television advertising also that they do, but not largely on the national level. It is more uh, popular in the North India. While Dalda, they try to market across the country and it has a presence. Uh, when I say presence, I mean it has some definite buyers in certain parts of the country who are very loyal to them. Uh, but what is important for us to note and note here is that both these brands are actually today owned by the same company called Bunge. Bunge is a multinational and they have bought out the Dalda brand for a few years and they are today marketing the brand in the country. And Gagan is another brand which is also being offered by them. So now Bunge is a multinational. Dalda has been a very big brand since so many years. But Gagan is a new brand relatively compared to Dalda. And so far as the North Indian con is concerned, he may be very familiar with this, but it, it may not be a very familiar brand in some other parts of the country and therefore it becomes a small brand compared to Dalda. This is one way of looking at a small versus big brand. I thought I'll take this as an example to be able to talk about how a small brand over a period of time can become a big brand. And sometimes we think a very big brand is actually not that big. It comes from a very, very small, humble background, right? So I will try and talk around this philosophy uh, as to how you can build a brand and how a small brand over a period of time can become a big brand. And I have taken a few examples to talk about them, right? So <clears throat> what is a small brand? Uh, I don't know, when most of you people, most of the people listening to me now must have definitely had a Vadilal ice cream, right? But some of them definitely know that Vadilal started off as a soda fountain somewhere in Ahmedabad, a small corner in Ahmedabad, right? So that is the beginning of Vadilal as a brand. It started as small as that. And in those days, we had other big brands also operating in the country. But somehow, Vadilal was able to identify a very, very unique phenomenon in terms of ice cream production, right? And they were able to bring this kind of new machinery into the country. And they started the modern concept of ice cream as we know it, right? Aerated ice cream. So earlier, earlier on, we were habituated to eat the solid ice cream, right? But the process that Vadilal people brought in, it allowed for bubbles of air to be pushed from the bottom in the entire mix of the ice cream whereby the ice cream became much more softer and fluffy. Now that was a very, very new and different kind of an experience before so, so many years, okay? When I was a child, it is a story of those times, as minimum uh, 35, 40 years ago I'm talking about, right? So a small brand is nothing but a brand. You can see this picture which I have taken to exemplify a small brand, right? This fish is a very small fish actually. But you see that it can have the fin of a shark. Shark is one of the most dangerous species of fishes in the country, in the world, right? So 
with the right kind of a strategic approach, a very small fish, a very small fry can actually become a very, very big brand over a period of time with the right kind of an approach, with the right kind of a philosophy and with the right kind of effort that are required to make a brand accepted in a larger market segment. Okay. But so far as the brand is concerned, the philosophy remains the same. The other day I was talking about modern branding, modern marketing, and I use the same philosophy because basic branding functions remain the same, activities remain the same, approaches remain the same. It's only a question of to what extent are you expanding your reach? That will depend whether you're a small brand or a big brand. I'll give you several examples from Gujarat and other places which we are very familiar with and we will be able to talk about a lot of them. But let us basically understand what's the brand. Branding is the process of creating a strong positive perception about a company. Right? So one very important thing is that it should be a strong perception. People should strongly feel whatever they feel. Right? The second thing is positive. So far as the perception is concerned, it has to give a positive connotation in the mind of the people. Right? So if you are able to create a very strong and positive perception about a company, I think you are winning the war already. Right? It could be about the company itself, it could be about their products or services, right? And all of this has to happen in the mind of the customers. It is a question of the customer's mind, the way he thinks, the way he believes, right? And that is where you have to be able to reach a strong, positive perception in the mind of the customer. And how do you go about it? You do it by combining elements like a logo, the design that you make around the logo or to represent your logo or the brand or your organization, the mission statement that you develop and a consistent theme throughout all marketing communication. Whenever you do any kind of a marketing communication, there should be a consistent message going out. If you are able to achieve this much, have a beautiful looking logo, relevant, I will tell you about it. Create a beautiful design, which is again relevant and have a strong mission statement which signifies what you stand for. We'll talk, be talking about all of this as we go ahead, right? And all of this should be translated in your theme of marketing communication. It should be consistent across whichever channel, whichever medium, whichever mode of communication you use, right? This is what I read about a few days ago uh, in preparation for branding seminar, right? Okay, by just a mark. Okay. So this is basically trying to understand a brand. And when I say a brand, in context of our today's topic, it has to reflect the smallness of the brand. And that is why this picture is also very significantly presented here. Let us move on to try and understand what all are small brands. I'm sure this vertical bottle that we see, people in Surat will relate to it very easily. It's a homegrown brand of Socio, right? A very popular brand. As a child, I also have, and a youth, I have also consumed Socio very, very, uh, in, uh, it, it being very popular, I was very fond of Socio because it has a very unique taste. Now see what I'm trying to say. A, the small brand can be a niche brand. How? Niche brands target small segments of consumers whose needs differ from those of the general market in the product class. So we had two major drinks. One was a cola drink and the other was an orange drink, right? Cola and orange, Fanta, Coca-Cola, Gold Spot, whatever you call it, it was either a Coke or an orange drink. And against this two major presence of cold drinks in the market, you came across something called socio, which is so distinctly different, right? And that difference is what the customers liked it. The consumers were looking for that small change, a very different way of consuming a product, right? My friends used to say that if you mix it with soda, it will taste like beer. I had not tasted beer in those days, so I didn't know, but that is what people used to say, that if you mix soda and socio, the taste that you get is like a beer, okay? But the whole idea here being, that 
if you are able to understand the need of a specific set of consumers, then you are able to create a product which will specifically satisfy that need. And that makes a brand. Okay. Another example of a small brand, you see, ship matchboxes. Such a small thing, right? For 10 rupees, you can get five of this. Okay. And it is a very, very highly consumable item. Every time you light a chili, you burn it and you throw it away, right? But it is so important a product in the life of people. Now in the modern days of gas and gas lighters and all, uh, the matchboxes are losing their charm, but they will never go out of fashion. They will never go out of use because there are so many uses where a gas lighter doesn't work at all. Or a, even a gas lighter for that matter, you don't want to use it, right? And that is where the matchbox comes very useful. Diwali time, the demand for matchboxes will go up like mad, right? So this is what I would like you people to understand from my side that small can be niche. And when I say niche, what I mean is targeting the very specialized kind of a need of a set of consumers. And then if you are able to expand that consumer base, if you find that more and more people are liking that particular way of consuming your product or the taste of the product or the a shape of the product, whichever way you have presented it, if more and more people start liking it, you start becoming big as you go ahead, right? But you're still selling your product to a niche customer base. So small can be niche, doesn't mean small has to be niche. I will explain that also as I go ahead, okay? The next uh, important aspect I would like to talk about is, how do I go to that? Okay, hardly anybody here who will not recognize this bit, right? I'm not talking about the red car, I'm talking about the silver car and the gentleman. Everybody knows MDH, right? I don't want to get into the name. It is much talked about in various media. But I want people to understand that this gentleman started very, very small. He started in a very, very small way trying to sell his masalas. And then today you see how big a car he owns, right? So this is a very small brand which started off very, very humbly and then gradually over a period of time doing a lot of things right. Please mind my words. Doing a lot of things right. He has been able to become a very, very popular brand, a very, very famous brand, a very, very rich brand. Right? Now, let me talk about this gentleman in the red car. This gentleman is none other than Mr. Lee Ayakoka, one time CMD of the Chrysler Corporation, the Chrysler Cars, the founder, in a way, of a car model called the Mustang. Mustang became so popular, which was ideated by him. Uh, not designed, but ideated by him. And then the designers designed it as per what he explained. He uh, wanted certain elements brought into it and so on and so forth. Uh, but Mustang became a very, very popular brand for several decades. And recently, uh, the company has relaunched the Mustang uh, because they think that the brand is still very, very popular and people do buy Mustang even now. Right? So, Mr. Lee Ayapoka is the first major corporate leader who decided to model himself in the advertisements for his cars, right? So he said that, I believe in my car and therefore if who better than I can talk about the goodness of the car. And that is how he is considered to be the first corporate person, corporate leader to actually have advertise the cars of his company. And that's exactly what uh, this, uh, I, I forget the name uh, of uh, MDH gentleman, right? Uh, he has also done the same thing. He insists every time that it will be only him 
who will be modeling for his products, right? So starting from a very, very humble, small beginning, you become big if you are consistently able to give what the customer is looking for. So something which was a niche becomes a very big brand over a period of time. A parallel of this in Gujarat you can take is that of Nirma. Krishan by Patel started off cycling around selling his detergent powder and now uh, he owns so many factories, so many companies and the whole of Nirma University has also evolved out of the same business of Nirma, right? I will be talking about the Nirma and the context of branding in a different way slightly afterwards, right? But what is important here for us to note is that no brand is small. It is only a question of time. And if you are able to relate to your customers in the right way, if you are able to convince the customer what you stand for, then the customer will start accepting you and more and more customers will join your market. And that is how gradually you will become a big brand. No brand in the world started big. They all started very, very small. Uh, some of the people who enjoy non uh, they must be having chicken at the KFC. KFC also started very, very small, right? In the same way, most brands have started very, very small, tiny level at which they started. Off. One more example from Gujarat is Rijat Papan, another very popular brand which started very, very small, right? And today has become a very, very popular big brand. So you have to be able to understand that if you want to make a big brand, you have to start small somewhere. If you start small somewhere and you create the right kind of customer connect, you will become big over a period of time, right? So that's what I mean when I say branding the small brand. Why do you want to do that? So that it becomes a big brand as time goes by, right? Now let's move on to some other ideas of what we need to do. Very important thing is believe in your brand. If you are owning the brand, the way I give you the example of the gentleman MDH, uh, he believes in his brand so strongly. Me, Ayakoka believed in his car so strongly that he is noted to have said that if you can find a better car, go ahead and buy it. That was the level of confidence that he had in his car, right? So if you have that belief in your brand, nothing can stop you, right? And then have very specific objectives for your brand. What your brand needs to do. Helmore is largely understood as an ice cream brand, but they have expanded into eateries and restaurants and fine dining restaurants also, right? But everybody, even today, when you hear the name Helmore, you will immediately think of the ice creams available from a company in Ahmedabad, right? So this is what you need to be able to understand. Have more when it started off, then it expanded the division. And then again, some people have a part of the family has a strong hold on the have more brand and they're doing a lot of good work, right? It's a very popular brand and it's doing very, very well against all the multinationals, right? So. Why I'm giving you the example of where I'm going to tell you again later on that it is a medium, a, a medium, medium level brand. I will explain what I mean by that, right? But the first important thing, as I say, is make your objectives clear. When I say objective, what I mean is what is the brand all about? Why are you in the business which you are in? What do you think the customers should think about your brand? Right? These are some of the things that you start off with. Right? What is the purpose of offering this brand in the market? Why are you doing it? You should make all these things very clear in your mind because those will help you form your objective statements. And once you have your objective, you are then able to strategize. You are able to prepare your strategies and tactics of how to create that brand identity. We will talk about that also as we go ahead, right? But if you have the clear cut objective in your mind as to why you are existing, why you are presenting yourself to the customer base, then 
you will be able to create the right kind of strategies. And if you have the right kind of strategies in place, you will be able to then create the right kind of communication, right? Because after all, what you are going to do about the brand, you have to communicate and the customer has to buy in your communication. The customer has to believe your communication. So unless and until you are able to create a strategy which helps you communicate clearly to your customer base, to your audience as to what you want to say, why you want to say it and how you want to say it. All of these things will become a part of your strategy of communication, right? And then communication is all about emphasis. My MBA students will know where this comes from. This comes from an article shared by one of my students in the morning on WhatsApp uh, written by Anand Sridharan of Nalanda Capital. Now, this gentleman has written some ideas in context of what is happening in the country, how a lot of people are uh, just simply uh, talking loud, whatever they don't even know anything about and so on and so forth. But one thing very important which I was able to derive out of that is this what he said. Objectives drive strategies, strategies drive communication, and communication is all about emphasis. So what do we mean here? And that is where once again, I go back to the picture. Look at the circle in the middle. What does it say? Have more eatery, have fun. Now, this is everything that they want to communicate about a have more eatery. What is the purpose of have more eatery? To help people have fun. That's the concept, that's the whole idea, right? So their objective is very, very, very clear. They want that people should come to have more eatery and have fun, right? Whatever else they do is a different issue. Whether they eat or they don't eat, whatever food they are selling, whether they have an ice cream or they don't have an ice cream is immaterial. Being at home or eatery, you should have fun. If you are able to do this, there is nothing more that you need to do so far as home or eateries are concerned, right? So creating an experience for your customer in context of what you are trying to say to the customer is what becomes very, very important and relevant. And that is what I mean that if you have the objectives in your mind very clear, then you will be able to derive those strategies in the right way. And if you have the right kind of strategies developed, there is no way you can make a mistake in communication. You see how clear cut, just in two words, they are trying to tell everything about the brand philosophy of have more it is, right? Have fun. I'm sure most of you people are also familiar with another brand which has come up much later than have more, and that is Cafe Coffee Day, the quintessential coffee brand of the country that they had some problems, financial problems, the owner committed suicide and all those things we don't know anything about. Uh, what is important is the branding, right? They also launched themselves with the same basic philosophy of having fun. But their focus was not just fun, right? Their focus was something else and that is what they communicated. A lot of things happen over coffee, right? I mean, it's not so very popular in Gujarat. Now it is becoming more and more popular in Ahmedabad and a few other places. But if you go south, Bangalore and all, you have coffee houses. And lots of meetings of people keep on happening at coffee houses, right? Lots of corporate meetings happen. Lots of business meetings happen at coffee houses. People spend time at the coffee house. They have a leisurely cup of coffee. And while doing that, they do a lot of discussions and so on and so forth. Picking up on this particular concept of what do the customers want? You see how they have identified the niche need of the people, a very, very specific kind of a need, a requirement of the people. And that is how they have created the entire brand experience. If you go to a coffee coffee day, there is a music playing, and it's not just any music playing. There is a strategic orientation in deciding what music will play at what time of the day at a cafe coffee day, right? There is a particular pattern of design in terms of the way the chairs and tables are designed, the kind of color combination that they are going to use. All of this is very, very well thought through. It is not just done like that. Across the country, every, every cafe coffee day, 
will have that common elements about itself, right? So have an objective that leads to your strategy. And if you have studied it, that leads to your communication. You are then able to devise the right kind of communications for your customers. And that communication will hit the customers and their mind in the most relevant manner. They will be able to buy into the idea of you as a brand, right? I have used have more as an example here. And I gave you the example of coffee, coffee day and so on and so forth. There are plenty of examples and all of you just simply look around your own hometown and you will be able to come across so many brands, right? For example, I am basically from a place called Bhavnagar in Gujarat. And if I am for, from Bhavnagar, obviously people talk about Gatshias, right? But when people talk about Gatshias, they forget one very important aspect of Gatshias and that is Lachu Pau Gatshias which only if you've been to Havnagar, you can have eaten, or if somebody has brought it for you uh, wherever you are, then you could have eaten it. But it's a very, very different, unique kind of an experience you get when you eat that particular kind of a pau gatia. And along with that, there is also a concept of sandwich called tikhimiti. A very unique thing I have not seen anywhere. And in the introduction, somebody told you, not somebody, I'm sure Nikita told you, that as a part of the retail yatra that I did with my students, I have traveled across the country at various places. But nowhere are you served a tikhimiti the way Lachu in Bhavnagar uh, have done it. Lachu was one gentleman and then his children expanded the businesses and then others also joined in and now the third generation is doing the business. So it has now uh, uh, kind of evolved into a much different kind of a business. But the whole idea is that the original Gatia Pao that he served with that kind of very, very liquid chutney with a lot of water in it, right? Onion, water, uh, lotion, and uh, lemon. I think these are the basic ingredients of, and of course, red mirch. Uh, these are the basic ingredients of the chutney. It's a very simplistic thing, but unless and until you have had it, you will not know what I'm talking about, right? This is what I mean by a niche kind of a brand. I am sure every city in the country has something unique to talk about like this. For example, most of you people are now very familiar with the concept called Dabeli. Where does the Dabeli come from? It comes from Kach Buj, right? So this is how we have to be able to understand that there are now brands which are exclusively popular for their Dabeli. Like in Bombay, you have Vada Pao. In, in, in Pune, if you go, there are two major brands of Vada Pao. Vada Pao is a product. But they have created branding and they are slightly different from all the other Vada Pao sellers. And that is how they have become very, very popular. Right? In the same way, you have South Indian dishes where people have become very, very popular, very, very famous. In Gujarat, we have um, Sankalp, Sankalp restaurant. Right? They also started off small and then now they have become big and so on and so forth. But these are those unique products which are not unique at all, technically speaking. What is the difference between a dosa and a dosa and a dosa? Come on, a masala dosa is a masala dosa is a masala dosa. But having a masala dosa at Woodlands is different than having masala dosa at Sankal. And both of these are different compared to having it at another place called Dakshinayana. It is Masala Dosa. But all the three people have identified that uniqueness about creating that Masala Dosa, which will be very much appreciated by one set of customers. This is a South Indian example. I am giving you various examples. Let me give you one more. Biryani. Hyderabadi Biryani. Now there are not less than 50 different ways in which Hyderabadi biryani is made. Okay, but Firbi, people go and eat Hyderabadi biryani at Hyderabadi biryani. Right? So, this is how people create branding for themselves by uniquely defining the totality of the brand that they are going to offer. It's not only a question of the product that you are going to serve, it's also a question of the way in which it is served the way in which it is prepared, the way in which the ambience is created, all of these things will add to the brand. And all of this is communicating something or the other about the brand. So while 
Anand Sridharan has talked about these things in a very different context. I found it very relevant for my today's talk, and that is how I brought it into my use today. Right? So I believe I have been able to explain to you what I mean by believing your brand and how you can, if you believe in the brand, identify the right kind of thing that you need to talk about, and that becomes your objective. And if you have the right kind of objectives identified, they will help you prepare the right kind of strategies. And with the strategies that you have, you can definitely create communication. The example here is a photograph is have more eatery, have fun. Right? In the same way, there are so many other brands that have also done a similar kind of thing. Let's move on and try to talk about something different, something else. And what is that? Another very, very important element in building a brand is brand ethos. Again, I have uh, taken this from another uh, publication that I read about in the last four or five days. Uh, there is a company, I, I had put the, uh, I don't know, somewhere uh, it has been lost. I have added a few things. I will show you if it comes in the next slide. But yes, uh, which is a private company into branding. And I have taken this from a blog that one of their employees or one of their consultants has written, right? What is brand ethos? Ethos or brand ethos is the bare bones of the brand identity. What does the brand stand for? What does the brand mean to people or to the owner of the brand? What does it mean, right? This defines the ethos of a brand, okay? And I have used the example of India Handloom. See, Handloom is being marketed by a variety of organizations, I mean, right? Different kinds of organizations have been marketing Handlooms in India, right? India Handloom is one unique national level branding that they are trying to do, right? But those of you who know Ahmedabad, in, on Ashram Road, there used to be a store called Handloom House. I don't know if it's still there, but it used to be there. In Bombay, it is not there now. There was a huge fire before a few years in the Handloom House building, and uh, I don't think they have started back again. Uh, I may be corrected. I don't know. But at least I have not come across the same Handloom House again in that particular area uh, leading from uh, Witty Station to uh, uh, Flora County. Okay. It was a very popular store, a very big store. Uh, and then there was a huge fire and all, and then things went off. Right? Uh, Handloom House. But this is only one example. Similarly, you have Khadi. Right? Now, see, if anybody who has actually experienced khadi, it's a very coarse kind of a fabric, right? At the first touch, it is not very smooth, okay? And after a few uses, it becomes a little bit more smoother and becomes more comfortable. But what is important is the concept behind it as given by Gandhi, Swadeshi. That was the core of khadi, and that was also a core when Henloom started off to improve upon the quality of khadi, right? So khadi is individual driven, that is people make on a very small scale, right? And then you have hand loom, and then you have power looms. Surat is very, very famous for the power looms of Surat, right? And from, if you are operating at a slightly larger level, then from a power loom, you will have a composite meal, the calicos of the world that used to be, right? So this is how we are basically talking about fabric marketing, right? And one of the ways of looking at fabric marketing is handloom. Okay. So what does handloom stand for? Now look at the list of words I have put there. It consists of the traits. What are traits? When we talk about personality, you know, there are certain traits that define a personality. Trait theory of personality people have studied. Okay. As a part of that, you have to have traits which are built into the brand also. Now, I'll give you one example. All of you have eaten samosas, okay? But there is a special kind of samosas which are made in Surendranagar, in Gujarat. Very differently made, right? And therefore, they are known as Surendranagar samosas. And they are available in Ahmedabad also. I don't know if they are available in Surat or not, but in Ahmedabad, they are available as Surendranagar samosas, right? They are very distinctively made samosa. Otherwise, most of the time, what we talk about is Punjabi samosa, the big thing. Okay. Any big samosa is Punjabi samosa. Okay. But the whole idea here is trait. What makes something unique and different is what we need to be able to understand. Right? 
and then uh, Gujaratis are very very innovative, right? And therefore, you have noodle samosas also. I have had them at some marriages, right? Instead of your typical masala that you feed into your samosa making, they put noodles into it and then make the samosa, right? And then Gujaratis are very innovative. But all of this define the trait. The moment somebody says samosa, a particular shape will come in your mind. A multiple triangle, a three-dimensional triangular shape will come to your mind. Then and only then it is a samosa. Now, with the same ingredients, making the same kind of a puri, instead of the triangular shape that you give, if you give it a square shape, is the taste going to be different? The same ingredients, the same masala, the same amount of frying, everything is done the same way. But somehow, a samosa is a samosa is a samosa. That is what I mean when I say trait. Those of you who have traveled North India, you must have had aloo tikki, right? And then there is stuffed aloo tikki also. So, aloo tikki has to have only a particular kind of a shape. It has to be made only in a certain way. If you go to Dehradun, go to have Kumar's uh, aloo tikki. So plain simple aloo, okay? With a little more masala added by him, right? But Kumar's aloo tikki are very, very famous and popular in Dehradun. Similarly, there are so many places that, that I, I told you already the example of vada pav. You know, what is so big in vada pav? But then there are brands of vada pav in Pune and Mumbai, right? And there is one brand in uh, Mumbai. Um, sorry, I'm forgetting. It's a very, very famous brand. And uh, it is the brand which has actually stated that they are taking on McDonald's. Okay? It is there at the back of my mind. If I get it back, I will tell you about it. Okay? They have opened up a branch in Ahmedabad also. I believe Surat also they may have it. Largely, they are available at various places. Somebody who remembers the brand, they can put it in the chat and everybody can know about it. Right? But this is what I mean when I say the trait of a product, the trait of a brand, the way you create it is what makes it different. Now, though this is talk about small brands, let me tell you about another brand which I consider as small in the fashion world. Though I, mean, I know the gentleman who talks about it as a big brand in multinational market and therefore it can be considered as a big brand also. But in the world of fashion is not all that big by turnover or marketing and all those things, right? I'm talking about a brand called High Design. A very unique leather brand coming from Pondicherry, Puducherry, right? So this is what I mean when I say, if anybody knows anything about High Design, they know what I mean when I say traits okay it has certain very specific aspects about the brand whereby it becomes very unique from any other leather brand and that's what i mean when i say you should have the right kind of traits incorporated into your product brand okay first part the second is culture now here it's surprising for people to know how can there be a brand culture See, we talk about organizational culture. People of organizational behavior will tell me, sir, organization ke culture hote, brand ka culture kaise ho sakta? But brands also have a cultural context, right? And I will give you some examples of the cultures of brands. Uh, say, for example, if you are talking about uh, Khakras, just to Ben Khakrawala may come to your mind, or Sonal Ben Khakrawala may come to your mind. How are these two different? Khakra again is a Khakra is a Khakra, okay. But both of these people have created a culture around their own brand whereby they are slightly different from the other. Both of them follow the same production systems, please understand, right? They engage the same kind of labor. They almost source all their raw materials and ingredients from the same kind of business people, right? So ultimately, there is no big difference in the Khakra. Basically, Khakra is the same. But the way they have built a cultural context to it, right? Sonal Ben Khakrawala is a much more commercially oriented kind of a brand, people will say, while other Khakrawalas are not all that commercially oriented. Somehow I know how people understand this kind of thing. But those who have done shopping in Ahmedabad, they know what I'm talking about, that Jatu Ben Khakrawala is different. And so no than Khakravala is different. And between these two, there is one brand which is present only, I think, at one place or maybe two, three places, 
falguni pen right anybody who goes to watrapur area ask for falguni pen you will be guided to a basement shop a very large shop medium size but large right and a lot of variety of things they do but they are again very different and unique from both the other that i talk so here is where i talk about very small brands right uh if if you go to surat i have been to surat several times and stayed in surat for two years right uh there is this i think mysore cafe on the chopati if you go to that place it is so uniquely different okay and i i have had my own share of eating out at different places and all but the kind of environment that you are getting at that particular cafe which i'm talking about at chopati in surat is very unique and different culture right udp is in mumbai and all other places have a very different and unique culture but as a udp it remains same across everywhere any udp you go to bombay in any of the suburbs of bombay you will find the same cultural context in serving whatever they serve and they say the same thing okay if you ask for a filter coffee it will come in the same way the glass of water will be moved away every now and then even if there is half of glass still remaining okay they have that system of continuous cleaning right and therefore this is what i mean when i say culture you are building the culture around the brand that you are trying to market okay it is not a question of the organization it's a question of the branding that you want to create about yourself it is the identity that you want to give to your brand okay So if you are able to do this, you are having the right kind of a cultural context. Another important thing is the goals. Now, when I say goals, there are two types of ways in which you may think of the goals. I talked about it in a brief way when I talked about them more, but here I will try to tell you one set of goals is that of the promoter and the company. Another set of goals is that of the brand itself, because various companies can have more than one brand also. but each brand will have its own special goals to be serving special customer needs and therefore those differentiated goals should be understood if you understand those differentiated goals very well then you are able to create the right kind of strategies as we talked about earlier right and then we have a mission mission should be the driving force of your operations whatever you do how you will do it is decided by the kind of mission statement that you have for example there is a concept called uh atithi devo bhava now i remember when i took admission in andhra pradesh mc science institute i used to stay in the university hostels and there was one restaurant called virambika restaurant in andhra uh, opposite outside the camp, uh, the hostel campus okay and uh, that marwadi owner I mean, I'm talking about 1976-77. He used to address all his customers as Mehman, Aye Mehman, Padariye Mehman, Beto Mehman. Mehman ko ye lakhe do, Mehman tu wo lakhe do. You know, Mehman ko roti kyun nahi mil rahi hai? You know, this is how he would address every time he talks about a customer. He talks in context of Mehman. Uh, so you need to be able to create the right context uh, for for the. way in which you want people to understand you and that is what i mean when i say mission so if you have the context created in the right way then you have a statement of mission which will help you move in the right direction okay and a mission emerges from the vision of the owner the promoter what did he start off with why did he start off the business that he did right i mean there are some organizations say for example trying to sell namkins right there are namkin organizations uh, which started off as very small businesses to serve the needs of a local neighborhood and that local neighborhood would have been a very humble uh, low income kind of a group and therefore the kind of product that they would manufacture would also be priced at a point at which those people are able to consume it and therefore it has to be priced very economically now if you want to price it economically obviously the ingredients that you buy also have to be bought at a very economical rate so this is a very unique kind of a situation where you are operating right but friends every city i am sure will have some businesses which started very small trying to serve a very niche small market segment of 
very low profile people and over a period of time they evolved and they grew to become genuinely very popular in big towns right uh, i don't know you may think in terms of bhavnagar once again narsidas bhava bhai right the most popular in the oldest brand of dakhyas that you hear of is narsidas bhava bhai in uh, bhavnagar okay so this is where before more than 100 years i believe they have an existence of 100 years or more uh, the promoter must have started off because i know the place where it is you know lokan bazar at the end of lokan bazar before 70 80 years what kind of that geography must have been i can imagine right he must be serving all the liberals who used to go to work at the uh, old port of bhavnagar right and and all the laborers in in that market area lokan bazar and that uh, dana bazar and all those things are in the neighborhood right that is where his main shop is located so he must have started off with a very very distinctive vision to serve that kind of people i was teaching at uh, dharmsi desai uh, university i was visiting faculty there and uh, in one year i got one student who was a son of a local namkin manufacturer and that son of a namkin manufacturer they were really really well to do he talked to me one day after the class uh, sir i want to create a very very different kind of a product i said what do you mean by a different kind of product he said this sir nothing drastically different i want to talk about the chamana only the mix that we sell busu as they call it okay i want to talk about that only but what i want to do is i want to create a 1 rupee packet of that product i said okay 1 rupee packet why do you want to do it so he said sir uh, i have borrowed this idea from uh, parleji i said how so he said see parleji people have that 13 or 14 pieces ka ek packet which used to sell in those days at about 4 uh, 4 rupees or 4 and a half rupees i don't know right about that but they had come out with a 1 rupee packet where there were some three or four four pack, uh, four biscuits in it okay and there was a lot of logic behind that small pack so this gentleman borrowed that logic and he told me sir i have an idea that there are a lot of laborers working in the rural areas in and around nadia dhanan and all and they don't have a lot of money at any point in time at a given time they will have very small amount of money so i want to create a situation where i am able to deliver 3 rupees or 4 rupees ka chai and 1 rupee ka chamana and that should take care of their afternoon is what i am looking at now see here is a guy who has had a very very unique vision okay and with that vision he must have created the mission and then the goals and everything right so this is what i mean these are examples of vision okay and then the vision has to relate to the community the community that you're trying to serve the community that your product is going to be consumed by and that is what i mean when i say brand ethos it has to be relevant and accepted by the community to whom you are trying to sell your products right if that happens your brand is definitely going to be successful right so this is the concept of brand ethos according to me and according to that lady right let's go on to the next ha ah, here there uh it is from same lady uh, graciela robertson from antem branding uh how do you define brand ethos she says that you have to first of all identify your audience who is your audience know them know them in and out try and create the right kind of insights about your customers your audience and then you should also establish the brand's voice and tone i have given you examples here i'll talk about them after finishing this establish the brand's voice as well as tone who should speak about your brand right for example amitabh bachchan has a fantastic voice but that may not be useful in every brand okay for certain brands you have to have certain kinds of voices only right so establish the brand voice and the tone with which you are going to speak about it okay and then of course you design compelling design so you have to use compelling design what do you mean by compelling a design which has elements built into it which will compel a person to look at it and try to take a little bit more interest in it than in general if you are able to do this much 
you are able to get an awareness you know the first basic stage of consumer buying is taken care of right and then of course ethos makes you authentic if you have the right kind of ethos the way i defined it just now all of these things if you have defined them correctly then you become an authentic brand right and if you have the right kind of ethos you are able to become a credible brand and good branding gives you authenticity what do we mean by that ethos makes you authentic and if you are able to create the right kind of culture and have the same traits which are expected in a given culture then you will have credibility people will believe in you the way you believe in your brand people will also believe in you and that is where the brand achieves authenticity right now first of all we talk about the ethos which help you make authentic but more importantly through credibility you are then able to bring uh, build what we call as authenticity right the brand becomes authentic now here i have given you two examples uh, nirma people wanted to get, come into the uh, toilet soap bathing soap category and they started off with the same brand nirma nirma lime fresh there are case studies on this and uh, i'm told unfortunately nirma as a brand did not succeed it failed they also tried with toothpaste nirma toothpaste also failed and then some research did was done and they were able to identify that nirma is so strongly embedded in the minds of the people as a detergent powder some people would use the term e cheap detergent powder i don't want to say cheap i will say an economical detergent powder right which has become a very very big brand today they thought that the same branding will help in selling the toilet soap but when you want to apply a toilet soap and you want to talk about the softness of the skin and all those kinds of things you don't want to use a detergent right and if nirma is a brand is a detergent in your mind people are not going to accept it you don't want to put detergent in your mouth in the early morning right the face is not supposed to be detergent while nirma is a detergent and that is why people say that it failed and that is how the same company came up with a new branding and they called it nima i mean nima then became reasonably successful once they mark started marketing not a very very big success but definitely much more than nirma okay there were people who became fans of nima and even today i think uh, nima keeps on selling reasonably okay they not garner a large market share there is such a lot of competition in this branding uh, in, in this toilet soap category that it's very difficult for any brand to become very very big brand but nima has still i think done a better job than nirma okay so these are the things that you have to be able to understand the brand ethos could be very strongly positive for one kind of a product will not be that strongly positive for another kind of a product if you forget this then your entire ethos has failed right to so create the right kind of ethos for a brand and then of course you can ask any question on all the things that i have talked about so far with this i think i have spoken enough on branding small brands and if there are any questions i will be happy to take them okay so so we have got uh, n number of questions here yeah and the first question is how can we like the unorganized sectors they can maintain branding okay see uh where are you from the person who is asking the question can we know where is or she from i so said the location is not mentioned okay okay i think uh, anyway not a problem wherever he or she is from but surat being uh, the, the the place where you people are, are stationed right uh, i'm sorry i'm sorry ha huh. so what do you mean by unorganized brand unorganized brands are those brands which are not registered businesses right so i would suggest that you go to iim amdabad and opposite iim amdabad go to have a cup of chai and i think rambai one of the most popular unorganized brand of chai wala in the country why i am saying this the top most professionals of the country and internationally also they have studied at iim amdabad and they have had their cup of tea at rambai right unorganized 
in the same way you have several examples in the night go to ahmedabad manik chowk so many people are so popular there and they are doing their business so strongly so well they are nothing smaller than a, a reasonably successful brand they are all unorganized right so any organized brand an unorganized brand if they maintain the ethos and if they are able to create the right kind of a cultural context of why they are existing i am sure they will be very very successful right i am sure you know a product called save company okay this is another product this is just a product but there are people who are very famous for selling save company right surat is so popular for coke wala right there are specific places in the season where people drive down 50 km 70 km and want to have coke wala only at that fellow's place unorganized branding right if you are able to create the right kind of identity for yourself if you are able to sell the concept of what you are trying to sell any unorganized brand also becomes very very popular right all the sabji walas absolutely unorganized but they have very strong loyal customers right every vegetable market has this kind of phenomenon happening they are all unorganized but they have very strong brand understanding in terms of how to deal with the customer and they have strong customer bases which are very very loyal to them i i hope i have been able to answer the question yes sir uh, so the next question is if a particular brand has lost its value in past what can be the most effective way to rebuild its value uh well uh, it's a corporate strategy uh, more of pr work so if okay. you have lost value there could be two reasons for it one thing could be that you have lost value as a brand whatever you are supposed to be doing you are not doing if you are not doing what you are supposed to be doing then you are losing value and then you are destined to die unless and until you realize what does the customer look for when he comes to you and are able to deliver that again then you will survive this is one part of it. but the second important thing that you have to be able to understand is is the value any more valuable to the customer there are people who started off businesses with a certain set of value system but that value system may not be very very relevant today and unless and until you change yourself you are not going to be very successful over a period of time for example wasp bakri now wasp bakri chai is such a odd name wherever i have told that name outside gujarat outside ahmedabad actually people have laughed at me what a what a strange name but then this is a name which was given to them as they say by none other than mahatma gandhi and there must have been a philosophy behind it right but see that is 70 80 years ago and today things have changed and therefore you have a good morning chai and a good evening chai from work but so if you are able to identify the value system that are changing and if you are able to change your branding accordingly and the brand philosophy accordingly you will still remain relevant and you will be able to deliver the modern value as it is expected by the customer right so if you lost value try to see whether you have started doing things differently than what you were supposed to be doing or the customer expect you to be doing that is one way of losing value the other is whether the value which you are representing is it any more relevant to the customer base or not? if it is not try to redefine yourself and you will again become thank you uh, and uh, sir i I'll, i'll uh, say this last question uh, i have got actually n number of questions but uh, to wind up this session uh, i will be asking this last question uh, so it is can this pandemic situation mm-hmm. be an opportunity for small brands to be big brands and if yes how i have a slightly different view on this don't try to think of pandemic as a reason for becoming big unless and until you have it in you you are not going to become big pandemic or no pandemic but yes you have an opportunity in this pandemic situation to become much much more valuable to your loyal customers and if they become more than satisfied with your brand they will become very i mean they are already loyal you are giving them a better experience today with various ways in which you are going to deal with them right and then you will become i mean your customers will become more enthusiastic about you as a brand even then you give them something more and better they will become your advocates they will start advocating your brand 
That is what we talk about when we say brand advocacy. A customer who is satisfied is a satisfied customer. The next level of satisfaction is a very happy customer. A happy customer is the one who keeps talking positively about you whenever, whenever he talks about you, right? But he's still talking about his experience. Then he will start talking about you as a must have kind of a brand. And that is when the market will start expanding. More people will start buying you, right? And the next higher level is when your customers start fighting cases for you. If there is an argument, they will have several points of arguments to raise why you as a brand should be purchased and not the competing brand. If you are able to achieve this, I think uh, pandemic or pandemic, you will become a big brand, right? But yet pandemic is giving you this opportunity that there are customers who have very, very difficult time. In those difficult times, if you are able to relate to their needs and wants in a right way, if you are able to give them what they are actually looking for, there is no reason why you will be able to have a much, much more bigger support from the same customers as well as more customers that they will bring to you because of the kind of experiences that you have given them. Right? So I think, yes, it is an opportunity, but you have to use it very intelligently. Okay. So rightly said by sir. So it's like one should believe in their brand and only and only then other people will believe in your brand. And so to conclude this uh, webinar, I register my profuse thanks to our director, sir, Dr. Snail Misri, sir, for organizing this webinar. I especially thank to Dr. Heman Trivedi, sir, for accepting our invitation to be the speaker of today's webinar. We are grateful to you, sir. My heartfelt thanks and gratitude to all my staff members for guiding and supporting throughout and to all the staff members of BMU family. A special thanks to all the young and energetic students, faculty members, research scholars, industrialists for participating in this webinar. And in the last, finally, I thank to all who directly and indirectly in, are involved in successful implementation of this webinar. I thank one and all again. Thank you so much, sir, for conducting this webinar. Thank, Thank you for coordinating it very well. Thank you so much. Thank you. Signing off and other queries, other questions will definitely be solved through some or the other platform. You can send me emails and I will respond to them or maybe even WhatsApp. If you can send me from sales, you can send me the questions on WhatsApp. I will try and respond to them. Right. Definitely, sir. You may collate all the questions together. There may be 40, 45 questions, but if you collate them, they may be talking about the same kind of thing, and you may reduce yes. the number. I will try and respond to each one of them. Thank you, sir. Sure.